Hi guys, this is Tamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Welcome back today. We're going to be talking about the genetic component and the intergenerational components of mental illness. You know, mental health is not just something that happens to one particular person in a family. As a matter of fact, it can become intergenerational to where a mental illness has been trans transmitted or transferred throughout generations families have a really hard time seeing that connection because most families tend to either bury mental illness under the surface or they just don't talk about it at all. So the fact that it's intergenerational never gets brought up. And so, you know, individuals feel like, okay, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and that's as far as it goes. The reality is that no, it's not. If you go back into your history and you go back into generations past, you most likely will find the genetic variants and the genetic components uh, and the biomarkers, right, of mental illness. So we're going to talk about that in today's video. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. For those who are subscribed and participating, thank you so much. And for those who are new, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button so you can stick around with us and be a part of our growing and validating community. The benefits for you in this video today is that I'm going to be talking about the intergenerational uh, components and biological markers of mental illness uh, throughout families. So uh, let's just go ahead and jump in. So when I'm talking about the genetic components and the biological components of mental illness throughout generations, I'm really talking about five specific mental illnesses, I should say. Not five Pacific, five specific mental illnesses. And that is bipolar disorder, autism, major depressive disorder, ADHD, and schizophrenia. Okay, so schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, major depressive disorder, autism, and ADHD. Five particular mental illnesses that have a very high genetic basis. Okay, research studies that have been done on the genetic variants or the genetic processes of mental illnesses throughout generations focuses on these five mental illnesses because research studies have highlighted some specific genes and DNA structures that tends to be impacted and influenced by our biology. Okay. And I'm not going to get too deep into this because, uh, in this video right up here, I talk about epigenetics and the traumatic, uh, impact of genes. Um, the, the, the relationship between, uh, trauma and epigenetics or genes and biology and DNA. And then I also talked about it in a recent video right over here as well. I'm going to put it up here somewhere. Um, and in those two videos, I talked about epigenetics. I talked about uh, how trauma is genetically based or research studies are looking for a genetic base for uh, trauma. But when we're talking about intergenerational mental illness, we're talking about mental illnesses that already have a genetic base and have been proven and shown to impact families over generations. With intergenerational mental illness, we're talking about situations where the children in families where the parents are ill or unhealthy have been greatly impacted. Intergenerational trauma can occur because of intergenerational mental illness. And so it's important that we understand what that looks like, right? How is it, how is it genetically transmitted and transferred throughout generations? And how does parental mental illness within a, a particular generation get perpetuated? And so I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. All right. So let me just give you a little bit of, of understanding of what the biology of this is. Okay. So uh, DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid. Try saying that really fast. Deoxyribonucleic acid DNA. DNA is basically uh, the, the structures by which the biology of who we are uh, is kind of like uh, created and written written okay it's almost like the way that i like to explain dna is it's almost like an album you know those old-fashioned albums and you you sit it down on the on the album player or record player is what they used to call it a record player and you know it just kind of like you know and you pull down the the top part of that the iron piece and and you let it lay on the record and it actually plays whatever's on that record those black those this thing over here, this thing that, that dates me, um, really that's what DNA is like. That's really what DNA is like. And it's like, you know, DNA is writing things on a record. It's writing things on this, on this, this structure, 
uh, in our 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 gene our genes and our biological makeup. I'll put it that way. And so whatever's written on that record right becomes a piece of who we are and that is why the impact of trauma and the study of epigenetics uh in relation to trauma is so important because things get written on our dna structures before we're actually brought into the world now i do want to uh define what a gene variant is okay so a gene variant is another way of saying a mutation okay it's an alteration in a gene that's basically what it is it's an alteration in a gene and genes can be altered altered and um they can mutate for various reasons okay um, and we're not going to get into that science. I'm trying so hard not to sound so scientific because I think it can lose you. Uh, but genes play a role in uh, decreasing or increasing one's susceptibility to mental illness. That's basically what's happening. Okay. So genes play a role in decreasing or increasing our susceptibility to a mental illness. So if we have an intergenerational uh, a genetic makeup of schizophrenia, then it may skip a generation and go to the next person, or it may go straight through. We really can't determine what gene is going to skip and what gene is not. What gene is going to be fully expressed and what's not. We can't predict whether somebody is going to get a mental illness just because they have that genetic makeup. Okay. So I think that's important to throw out there as well. Uh, that if you had a mother or a father that had schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, it doesn't mean that that's going to happen to you. And if it does happen to you, it doesn't mean that, you know, your genetic expression is going to be the same as your mom or your dad's. Okay. So I do want to put that out there. Uh, but DNA is a really interesting component of mental illness and it can happen throughout generations. There's major, major studies about schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and major depressive disorder, as well as suicidal ideas amongst twins and those particular studies and I'm going to put them in the description box below for you those particular studies uh, highlight the genetic components and the biology of of those illnesses amongst the twins and uh, they tend to share the same gene variants or the same uh, gene alterations and and they seem to express their genes similarly uh, because they are twins which is pretty cool so it kind of highlights and increases the um, uh, legitimacy of genes and how it impacts mental illness, okay? So uh, when we're talking about mental illness uh, and gene expression, um, I think it's important to also mention that there are a few things that kind of um, pushes us to express our, our genes, our intergenerational mental illnesses, uh, mental illnesses that have been passed on throughout generations, and that first one that I like to focus on a lot is trauma. Trauma has a way of causing genes to be expressed in a certain fashion uh, or traumatic exposure, right? So it doesn't mean you have to necessarily experience trauma. You can vicariously experience it, which is what I talk about in this video up here. You can vicariously experience it as secondary trauma. It's something that you could hear about. It's something that you could look at pictures about, right? You don't necessarily have to experience that trauma, okay? But I do think trauma uh, helps to cause um, us to become more susceptible to mental illness, intergenerational mental illness. Okay. The next thing is environment and social environment, right? Did you grow up in a neighborhood where there's frequent violence and drugs and gangs and killings and murders and the list goes on, right? Did you hang out with people who did risky things and frightening things? And were you exposed to drugs at an early age or alcohol? Was your life kind of fast, right? And uh, oppositional defiant, right? Those things influence gene expression as well. Another thing that influences gene expression would be abuse and neglect. Mm -hmm. So if you're you know, genetically predisposed I'm sorry, guys, if you're genetically predisposed to having a mental illness genetically, you know, being in an environment uh, where you're with the wrong crowds or you're being impacted by your environment or your social environment, that is likely going to result in a mental illness, right, or some kind of mental health condition, all right? Uh, the next thing is risk factors, and I talk a lot about risk factors on this channel uh, and in other areas where I'm, where I'm doing presentations or speaking engagements, risk factors are things, and I'm going to put a couple over here for you, things that make us more vulnerable and susceptible to develop, developing issues. So if you have these risk factors over here, if you have 
all of these risk factors, or at least some of them, you're more likely uh, to experience intergenerational mental illness. Okay, you're most likely to have uh, some exposure to or difficulty to a mental illness. Okay, and last but not least, if you're a first degree family member, you're most likely to experience a mental illness. And a first degree family member would be like a daughter or, or um, a brother, a sister, right? If you're a second degree family member, you're going to be a little bit more removed from that gene, right? Um, because again, sometimes mental illnesses can skip generations and sometimes they don't, right? But if you're a second degree relative, like a cousin or an uncle, you may be less susceptible. You're further away from that genetic expression than you would be if you were a sister, a brother, or, or, uh, you know, something like that. A twin, you know, t twins are like really locked in. They, they, they really have similar genetic makeups, but, um, siblings and, um, um, si well, I'll just say siblings or fraternal twins, uh, tend to have less susceptibility, but um, that susceptibility is still there. You know, the possibility is huge there. All right. So um, I think also it's important to point out that your physiological health can also uh, uh, cause gene expression of mental illness throughout the throughout the generations in your family, right? So if you have physical ailments like diabetes and heart conditions and um, what else, um, something like um, chronic migraine headaches, if you have a traumatic brain injury, um, you know, if you have something else like Crohn's disease or um, uh, Parkinson's, right? Those kind of physiological illnesses or medical conditions can also make you more susceptible to mental illness. So uh, genetically more susceptible, I should say. So I think this is a very important area to focus in on. Um, and so I'm going to come back, I think, um, a little bit later in the week and talk about this a little bit further because I'm going to mention some things that may help you understand what's going on in your own family. Thank you for being with me today, guys, in this video. I encourage you to give it a thumbs up if it was helpful and go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stick around with us. And I will see you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Bye.